So, hi, I'm Artisha Moore. I'm the president and CEO of Association Farm. And today I'm here to introduce Jackie Price of Southwell. So Jackie, before we start, I'd like to turn it over to you to introduce yourself. Well, first of all, Artisha, congratulations, congratulations. I'm super proud that you have decided to join us in Chicago and take the helm of the Association Forum. So we're very, very happy um, that you'll be serving in that space. And I'm super excited for you, so no doubt. Um, yes. Once again, um, I'm Jackie Price Osafo, and I am the Executive Director for the Society of American Archivists. Well, thank you for being with us today. And what I'd like to start with is, what is it like to be the first person of color for your organization? I'm going to take a deep breath um, because I think um, um, being the first is not something you set out to be, but it is something that we know is very common when you look at women and underrepresented populations. Um, so for me, um, it's, it's gratitude at the end of the day. Um, it's gratitude in a way that so many people had to do so many amazing things in order for me to walk through the door. So um, today while I was getting dressed, I decided to wear this particular necklace here. And it is a little glass, piece of glass inside this necklace here. And it was given to me by a previous executive director who is a mentor, a friend, a colleague, um, Polly Undessa, who is the executive director for the Water Quality Association. And it came with a little note um, that says that um, glass ceilings are broken, um, uh, mostly by folks who sit in underrepresented populations. Um, and when she gave me this necklace, um, it made me cry. Like, I was just like, wow. Um, you know, I was breathtaking. It was breathtaking for me. Um, um, and, and along with it being a breathtaking experience, there is a huge responsibility um, that you must carry on your shoulders. And that's fine. Um, because I feel like so many people before me have done that. So I'm okay doing that. But, um, you know, you have to care for everyone. Um, not just the people who look like you, but the people who don't look like you, the people who uh, are very different from you in so many aspects. And that's something that I've been doing all of my life. So that part is not difficult for me. Um, but yes, was it a moment of, whew, I need to breathe? Yes. But has it been an amazing experience? Yes. Have, um, it's, it's been made possible by so many people and many of them um, are very different from me. So I'm thankful for the community who created a space for me to walk through the door to break a glass ceiling. So I think that's really powerful. And especially when you say about the community that made this possible in, in that struggle for us. And then for me, you've been so inspiring for my career. So to watch you in this position inspire so many others is, is for me, I'm also grateful right, because of the folks that will come after you. As we look at this in, in this recording of two strong African-American female leaders, I'd like to ask you from a reflection standpoint, what does Black History Month mean to you? You know, when I think about Black history and I think about my heroes, uh, my sister shared a story with me um, as a grown up. This was maybe like a year or so ago. And she said, Jackie, do you remember when we were kids and I was asked, um, who's my hero? And I told my teacher it was my father and the teacher told her, no, it has to be someone else. She said, no, it is my father. And, and she stuck with that, you know? And I teach you, my heroes are people that you don't know. They're all people I know. So when I think about black history, I think about my grandmother, um, I think about the picture that sits on my kitchen countertop with my great-grandmother and my grandmother who is a teenager who's standing there tall and strong and had to endure so much. I think about her sister who died in a fire that could have been prevented, you know. I think about my own parents who basically migrated from the South. They were the first to leave their families. Um, from the South and because my father decided that um, he did not want his kids to experience what he experienced growing up in um, 
in the South. And uh, here are these two young people with three little kids moving to Chicago with nothing. And, you know, and here we are today. So uh, when I think about Black History Month, I think about the people that probably only I know and only my family knows. So um, those are the people who um, I hold close to me, who I am obligated to to do what I do and keep contributing to this world. So that's what it means to me, mm -hmm. the struggle. Yeah, I think in some aspect, you touched on my last question about your heroes. So I'm gonna take this chance to do an audible and ask a question about in carrying that legacy and heroes with you, how does it show up in your leadership daily? My mom shows up in almost everything that I do. Mm. Um, her voice is in my head. You know, I can't shake Katie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Katie is, you know, Katie, you know, and both my parents have passed away. And um, I'm lucky to say that I had two amazing parents. I'm so lucky to say that. And um, Katie shows up in a way that Jackie, when you're having a tough day, suck it up, soldier, go to the bathroom, wash your face and come back out and do it again. She shows up in a way um, where if you want to ask a question or if you want something, ask for it because you will not die if someone says no. And Artisha, in 90% of my life, people have said yes to me. Mm. Isaac, my father, shows up in the calmness, in um, the moments when a leader, you need to be very calm and you need to breathe everything in and everybody in, and you need to wrap your hands around the family. That's my father showing up. Um, he was the one, uh, as growing up, everything was a family meeting. Like, I'm like, can we just buy some Cheerios without having a family meeting? <laughs> Everything was a family meeting. So um, how do I become this inclusive person? How do I, how did I understand that uh, it takes a difference of, of all these people? Um, and, and growing up in a house with a disabled sibling um, was my father. So Katie and Isaac, yin yang, some days it's 50 Katie, some days it's 60 Katie, some days it's 60, 70 Isaac. So they show up in every single thing that I do. And um, I'm grateful, you know, I'm grateful. I really uh, wish that most people or a lot of people have that same experience and can find folks in their lives who show up for them. And um, in return, um, being a child fee person, I'm, I'm doing the same thing for my nieces and nephews. I'm showing up for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my goal is to be the favorite auntie. <laughs> If that means buying candy or <laughs> ordering them something goofy on Amazon or my niece who needed to, um, who's having a baby and need to gain weight, I said, every pound you gain, Auntie Jack will give you $10. She was like, okay. I mean, whatever I need to do to make them amazing people, that's me giving back. I appreciate that. And this time frame to hear from you, I think one of the things that I've always loved about you is your authenticity and how inspiring it is to hear that that is threaded from your family and your legacy, and that's how it shows up. So I'm grateful for your parents and your history and the folks that brought you here so that you can continue to inspire us all. So thank you, Jackie, so much. Thank you, and um, it's been an amazing journey. Yeah.